Welcome. Welcome to uh, Chicago State University um, Game Development Workshop. Yay. <laughs> can everybody come around so you can see you guys? Come on. Down. They're going to tell you a little bit about what games they're making, and then you can talk about Corona. Okay, great. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, uh, the game that my group is, yeah, we have groups of three or four and some two because some people left the group. But um, our group, uh, we're making two games. One uh, we're going to call Two Worlds Collide, which is going to be a DC versus Marvel game. Similar to Angry Birds. Yes, it's like we're making like uh, our own versions of Angry Birds. And the uh, second version, uh, the second game that we're making is Angry Nerds. Uh, with a Z. Z. With a Z. <laughs> and the game will have, will have Steve Jobs, the creator of Microsoft, and the creator of Facebook. Nice. That's a, that's a, that's a good tr uh, trio. Yeah, it is. Angriest nerds in the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then somebody else, you want to talk about your? Um, okay, so I named my game Punky, and it's like, <laughs> it's a battle between like the habitat and the rainforest, so it's like the monkeys and the pandas, and then we're going to like edit the background to be like a jungle type thing, so it's similar to Angry Birds. Cool. Like it, like it. Environmental. <laughs> Can you see Asa? Yeah, there he is, Asa. My game name is The Epic Rap Battle. Nice. There's one rapper going against three rappers. Do you ever watch the uh, Epic Rap Battle on uh, YouTube? Yeah. yeah is, that, is that kind of what you're modeling after? Yeah, yeah. He's using the actual <laughs> rappers, though. So. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Good. Love it. Next. <laughs> My game is about Xbox versus PS4. Right now, there's two characters, two, two, what's it called? Two bombs named, named PS4, and the other one is going to be about a Game Boy. And then the enemy is the Xbox One. Next. I think that one would probably get a lot of traction just because there's so much uh, animosity between PlayStation and Xbox, uh, especially everybody who uh, was upset that Xbox One did, wasn't backwards compatible originally. So there's a lot of love went over to PS4. That's true. Okay, mine's about a, two, a cat and a dog going against trying to get to their bones that they wanted so it's basically the cats they're just trying to get the bones she's gonna launch cats and dogs at bones have you seen the have you seen the android app there's an android app that has cats that are uh, they're bank robbers and uh it's all hand drawn art it's um uh just kind of pencil drawings and you you move the, the car back and forth with, with these cats in it and uh you're trying to avoid the police who are uh you know trying to stop you and and uh and so you try to keep the police from getting in front of you and and try to keep them from throwing bombs on your car and, and all that kind of stuff like that and it's you know so now i'm thinking uh you know i'm in that envisioning that as being you know cats and dogs right cats have robbed the bank and then the dogs are the the police and you know it's a fun game. I'll send, I'll send a link so you guys can check it out. It's not a Corona game, but it's, it's just fun nonetheless. Well, forget about it then. <laughs> <laughs> corona game. Yeah, it could, um, be totally, it could be easily made in Corona. I just don't think they use Corona. you mind if we record this? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually recording on this end as well. So, uh, sure, go ahead. I tried and said I had to have your permission. Oh, oh, let me, let, me, uh, let, me, let me work that out. Hold on just a second. Change my view here. Uh, and allow record. Yeah, so try it now. All right, I think we're doing we're doing it. Okay, great. All right, so anybody else? Did we miss anybody? No, because we're in groups. Right, but I thought there was you got everybody, right? It's Kyle. Oh, get up here. <laughs> get up here. So somebody's hiding in the back. Yeah. Oh, 
Come on down. Come on down. It's coming. <laughs> Hi. Hi. My game is cat. It's um cats and dogs going against the milk. Cats and dogs going against the milkman. Nice. <laughs> Four mailman. So talk. Tell us about Corona. We're um, we're we're all interested, but we want to know more about it. Yeah. So how much do you guys know? Do you? I mean, where have you started? Have you just? They've uh, they've explored the. Uh, the coding a little bit today. They they explore the image uh, you know, arrangements and substituting one image for another image, image sizes, you know, resolutions for various devices and stuff like that. Um, so and they play with the simulator, obviously. So uh -oh. yeah, I'm going to share my screen. I I want to I want to talk to you about a couple of uh, examples. So if you guys already know, uh, you can go to coronalabs.com and you can download the SDK. And I'm sure you guys, if you've already been working in it, you've seen what it looks like and how it works. So I'm not going to go. We also looked at Robert, uh, Robert Ney and uh, yeah. his bubble. Um, bubble ball? Bubble ball, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, his, he was, uh, that was several years ago. And he kind of put Corona on the map because he was, uh, I think maybe 11 or 12 or something at the time. And he created it. He created an app that had uh, millions of downloads and it was a physics based app. So you guys have seen that. Uh, but you know, that's, that's, that's a great story. And we have tons of uh, developers in the community who are, you know, they're not even, uh, they're not even old enough to, to sign the contracts, you know, to, to, to do deals with uh, studios and stuff yet. I mean, you know, you know, they don't even have bank accounts yet. So uh, it's great. Um, we, and we love that. We love seeing that. So, um, so I want to show you some examples today of, of apps, people who have one person teams, uh, two person teams, and then people who have grown it into entire studios and, and just, just sort of give you a sort of an inspiration, uh, of what you can do with Corona. So, uh, so the first one I want to show you you guys uh, is, is Lonely Wolf. This guy created eggs, which is this, this, this app here. Uh, and basically what you do is you're kind of like, it's kind of like an angry birds in that, in that you're throwing this character around uh, inside of this, this world. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, you're throwing them around inside of this world and your object objective is to uh, collect all these little, um, these little dots here until you get to the end of the puzzle. And all along the way, you, uh, you kind of throw yourself against the wall and, and if you crack the character, if you break the egg, you, uh, you, know, you have to start over, but as you, play you you gain points and um and you're able to um actually go in and customize the character and that's one of the things that we're really beginning to see people do so if you if you guys are you know getting started with your games even if being uh, something as simple as being able to put a hat on a character uh you know like once you've amassed so many points or, or passed a, a certain level of gameplay if they can uh, add a hat to a character it really makes it fun for the player uh, and, and this person did that. So they, they actually went and pitched their idea at something called the Big Indie Pitch. It's a, a pocket gamer event in, in London, and they won. And this whole game was built using Corona, and the developer you know, sp spent a lot of time. You can see there's a lot of custom art. He drew everything himself, uh, and he did, he did all the game uh, development himself. It was just one person. So... Uh, I'll send you links to all this stuff that we're talking about, but this is a this is a great game to, to take a look at. It's a unicorn, right? Uh, a unicorn? It's a unicorn. Then. No, not not necessarily, because uh, uh, here is uh, Takashi Yoda. So this gentleman is uh, lives in Japan. He went to San Francisco for this uh, app loving uh, uh, event. It was a, a hackathon. And uh, App Lovin was basically trying to encourage developers to, to develop Apple TV apps and to use their uh, ad platform so that, so that they could, you know, developers can make money and App Lovin can make money when developers make money. So uh, Takashi won $25,000 at that event. So the, the, the interesting backstory to Takashi, though, is that he lives on, um, he lives on about $1,000 well, $1, a month which in, in yen is, uh, you know, not a whole lot. So 
uh, so he, he tells this whole story about how he kind of, he's really dedicated to this idea of making apps and how coming to, you know, the U S and, and, and not knowing whether or not he was going to win or not was a big, a big deal for him because, uh, you know, he did, he generally works on his games. He doesn't go out a whole lot. Uh, there are times when, you know, he's, he's, uh, um, you know, he's just really just committed to developing games and he doesn't spend a lot of, a lot of money on other things. And, and so for him to win the $25,000 using Corona, uh, at this event was, was like a really, really big deal for him is he even got to turn around and, you know, show it to his parents and, and they were proud of him for, for, uh, for winning it because up to that point, they were kind of like, you know, why are you, <laughs> why are you spending all these time on making games? Uh, but you know, this kind of proved the, proved the point that it, it, it does pay off. Uh, so that was a, that was an interesting story, and and so uh, a few of these others here are like this is a a, a, a multi person studio in uh, the U S. and they they make games uh, that are just a lot of fun to play. So they kind of come up with these concepts and just play with the ideas. They don't know exactly how it's going to work out, but they have you know they 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 like they hand drew all these characters here, all these little crocodiles. Um, and they just, they just keep iterating on it until they have something that they feel is fun. And, uh, and they even did a, a deal with the NBA here recently where they were actually able to go and create a, a branded game um, where, you know, they, they basically took all the, the, the characters and, um, you know, made it to where you, you had to go through all these different puzzles. But again, it's kind of Angry Birds style in that you're just throwing a basketball uh, through a hoop through at different points of the game and trying to, uh, uh, you know, collect all the coins and, and, and do all the other things that you need to do to accomplish the level. So those are kind of fun. Uh, this one is uh, Hapiko. This, this is a two-person team. This is actually uh, one guy does the art and one guy does the programming. So this, this game was actually, let me see if I can get a screenshot here. Yeah, this game was actually on the Apple App Store, it was featured on the Apple App Store for uh, like three weeks during the Christmas holidays. And, uh, and that's a big deal for developers because, you know, they want to get in front of as many people as possible. And generally at Christmas time, people are getting new devices, either iPads or iPhones or, or whatever, or Android devices even. And, um, and so they were able to be, to be in front of all those people getting their brand new devices, looking for apps to put on their devices, uh, you know, at the Christmas time. And, uh, and one of the interesting things about this, the backstory to this is that Rob, the guy who did all the programming, he actually took a Game Boy, you know, your old school sort of, uh, you know, before play, um, your, 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 your uh, PS2s or any of that stuff. He, he took a, an old school Game Boy and he hacked it to uh, be able to get, uh, audio out of the Game Boy, and then he bought a cartridge that allowed him to uh, actually create music using the Game Boy. So he was actually he was able to create. He said, "There he is. He's kind of sitting outside creating the music." He he was able to create all the music for the game using the Game Boy, and it and it has this old school eight bit style, um, you know, uh, music to it. And uh, so that was, that was just kind of fun. So, you know, there he's, he's, again, he's kind of creating the music, editing. He creates it on the Game Boy and then he edits it on the computer and uh, just having a good time with it. Um, but this, you know, that's something that he didn't have to do in order to, to make a game with Corona. It was just something that he, he had this idea and he just went with it. He was like, hey, what, what would happen if I did this? And he experimented with it and he got a great result. And, and that hard work, you know, turned into... Uh, being featured by Apple for three weeks. Um, so, so just real quickly here, here's a here's a studio that's in Brazil. These guys started out it started out with uh, you know a couple of co-founders, and then now they have sixty people in their uh, studio, and everything from designers to uh, artists. Um, they've got um, um, musicians and uh, get, you know the game developers and, uh, and people who are you know involved in making sure that they uh, create plush toys and all that all that kind of stuff. I mean they have really grown this and uh, they just did it 
uh, they actually have 200 apps in the app store and they did it by just starting out with, with an idea and, and then just putting out as many apps as they could as quickly as they could. And then they've grown it into a business, you know, that employs 60 people. Um, and then the other thing about Corona. So, so I don't know if you guys, I mean, if you don't realize it or not, there's, there's, when you look at solutions out there for making apps, there's apps that there's, there's platforms that make, there's tools that make, games and then there's tools that make business apps and, and business apps can be defined a couple of different ways you know you have your sort of your corporate business apps that are columns and rows and you, you push information in you pull information out uh, but then there's also like small business um, whereas you know you go to a, a, a restaurant or a, a, you know a pizza place or, or something like that and that business wants to have an app and so you, we won't necessarily be entering data and in, entering information in and, and storing it and pulling it back out. You might just be looking at what, what the menu is for the day or what specials there are or calling up the business and uh, ordering a, a something from them. And so uh, with Corona, you can, you can build business apps, you can build um, general purpose apps. So if you wanted to make an egg timer or something like that, you could use Corona. Uh, also, if you want to make games, of course, uh, you can use Corona. And, and games in the app stores are like the, the largest category. And, and, they're, and really, it's the, it's the largest category because you know, people are looking for entertainment, they're looking for distraction, uh, and, but also you know, developers like to make games. They're, it's fun to make games. So, so there are a lot of games in the app store. But there are also, uh, there's lots of opportunity in spaces that are not games. So for making uh, egg timers and general purpose apps and, and business related apps and stuff like that. So, so here's an example, uh, Mobile Octopus. This is a developer in uh, New York who actually makes apps for businesses and he's gone through and, and basically just sat down with the, the business owner. This might be one person who owns the business and he sits down with them and says, okay, what is it that you want your customers to do? And, uh, and this is really important because having an app on your phone means that it's, uh, it's, always in, it's always there. The person, all they have to do is tap it and they can see, um, they, you know, they could get back to the business. Whereas if it's on a website someplace, well, then they have to go to a browser and they have to pull up the address and then they, you know, it's a, a little more complicated. But if, uh, well, with an app, you can push notifications to the person. You can tell them, hey, we have specials today or, or whatever. And one of the interesting things about this app in here in the middle, this Broadway North Pizzeria, is that uh, he actually built a game. Let's see if we have hit here. He actually built a game into the app. So, you know, rather than just making something boring like, hey, here's our menus, here's our specials, uh, that sort of thing, you can actually build in a game that could remind you to come back and, and play pieces of the game so that... Um, um, so that you would be reminded to visit the business. Uh, so that's so that's a, that's a fun one. Uh, and then and then lastly, if you guys haven't seen Major Magnet, this one this one is is crazy. This one actually you actually um, see if I can bring it up here. This one you can actually revolve around. Um, let's see if it will let me mute it. Uh, no, it's not going to do it. Let me just see if there's an extra. You revolve around. Um, no, it's not going to pull it up. You revolve around magnets. So basically, what you do is in the game. Let me see if I can. So in the game here, what you're doing is this. This is a magnet right here in the middle, and you're just spinning around that magnet. So it's, it's so Corona has a physics engine built into it so that you don't have to know how to do the math and, and, and write the code to do that piece. But, uh, but you can make something where, you know, he swins, he spins around a magnet and then when you tap the screen, he, he then lets go of the magnet or the magnet deactivates and then he can spin off to a different piece of the, of the game. So it's again, almost like an angry birds game because you're still kind of trying to collect all these, uh, these little dots but uh, but you're doing it in a different way. You're not just launching the character from the ground. You're spinning around a magnet and then launching the character uh, at different times in the game. So those are just a, a few examples. Uh, and then, then this guy, this guy is actually he's on the on Corona Geek a lot. Um, he's a one person show. He does art. He does the uh, programming. He does the website for himself. 
Um, he's just one person and he puts out all these different apps uh, and they're all fun. So uh, it can definitely be done by just one person. Another unicorn. Another unicorn. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's, it's interesting. Like, uh, like Lonely Wolf, uh, you know, he, he kind of likes to work by himself. Uh, but then, uh, you know, the guys from Pony Wolf, uh, there's an there's a artist, there's a developer, uh, you know, and there's, uh, I think it's two or three people, as a matter of fact. And then uh, with Hapiko, uh, with, uh, what was it? Um, actually, it's uh, Laser Dog. If you go look at Laser Dog's website, these guys, um, they like working together because um, one of them does the art and one of them does the, uh, the programming. So the guy who does the art, uh, he does, uh, he also does video editing. Um, he also comes up with the, the, the trailers for the games so that they can promote the game to uh, different uh, uh, magazines and stuff. Uh, so, you know, teaming up with someone, someone who has an opposite skill is a, is a good thing. So if you, you don't have to do it all yourself, you can say, hey, you know what? Uh, I, don't, I don't like the way that I draw or I would like this. I like your style of drawing and I think that we can make a game together. Then you can always pair up with someone. So yeah, it's definitely not, there's not, there's not a, a, a one size fits, fits all sort of answer. So uh, when you create a game on, or an app in front of, how many ports can you send it out to? How many different devices? Yeah, so, so one of the, the, the big things, like I was saying earlier, when you look at tools, there's tools that do uh, games, there's tools that do apps, but there's not that, many game, not that many tools that do both games and apps. And the other thing that you want to take into account when you look at a tool is you want to say, how many stores can I put this, how many devices can I put this app on? Because I would, I would, I would guess that if you went and, and did an informal poll, you would find that you know, some people have Android devices, some people have iPhones, some people don't have devices at all. Maybe they have, uh, but they do have a, a, like a, a, a tablet or something. Um, so Corona lets you put, apps on iOS, which is uh, iPad and iPhone. Uh, you can put it on Android, you can put it on Kindle, you can put it on Windows desktop. So your old school Windows desktop computers, your, your uh, OS 10 um, devices. You can put it on um, Apple TV and Android TV, which are, you know, connected TVs are becoming a big thing. Um, and you can also put it on where we have some developers who have put their stuff on Steam. So, you know, that's the important part about getting it on different stores is that you want to reach as many people as possible. Um, and so if you can get in front of somebody on Steam, then, you know, that's a whole, that's a big, big audience that you can get in front of. And so you just want to be on as many devices as possible. It's really important for that. Otherwise, you'd have to, if, if you were going to do this, if you were going to go and write an iOS app, you would have to use Swift or Objective C, and then if you're like, "Hey, this is great," but now I want that to be on Android, well, you'd say you, then you'd have to go and write the whole the thing over again in Java, and so using a tool like Corona allows you to be able to write that thing one time and then go and publish to all those different platforms without having to rewrite the app over and over again. And that's really important. Absolutely great. Absolutely great. So, is there any questions? Yeah, I just want to encourage you guys to, you know, to really see this as the beginning of, of something great. Um, you know, apps have, have not been around that long. Uh, and it can seem like sometimes that, you know, that, that we're right in the middle of something, right? That, that oh, that's already been done. But the reality is, is that it's, it's continually changing. And when you, when you step back and you look at anything, right, the, 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 the telephone, you know, back in the day that the telephone was this weird sort of thing and you hold, held up to your ear and you, you spun it, you know, and, and, then, and, then it was, uh, and then it was just a phone that was in your house that you could just pick up and talk on. Uh, and then it was a, a, this weird sort of bag phone thing that went in your car and pe only certain people had. And now we have cell phones, we have pocket phones in our pocket, and very few people have landline phones, right? They don't have wired phones anymore. They have phones in their pocket. And we're seeing that same thing happen with computers. I mean, we, we, we have desktop computers, we have laptops and stuff like that, but we're really moving 
to where everybody's doing things on their phone, more and more things on their phone. You and on your wrist, right? Yeah, I got a phone on my wrist. You know, eventually we're going to get to the point where, um, you know, it's, it's going to look completely different than it does today. So, so don't think that you can't do something because it's already been done. Look, look way ahead. You know, look, look way ahead and say, what, what could we do that people aren't doing today, right? Well, how can we reimagine what we're seeing right now? Um, and that's, it's sometimes it's hard to do, but if you can do that, then you can leapfrog everybody else and come up with something really, really uh, creative. Uh, I couldn't hear it now. She's asking if uh, she wants to know how many uh, how Corona works with all these systems. So, so Corona. Um, so basically, what happens is is you write all your applications in Lua. So that's the that's the front end. That's the piece that the, that the developer sees. And what happens is the engineering team actually does. Uh, they with they abstract that for you. So so basically that they do all the the coding on the back end. They actually have to write uh, they actually have to write in different tools so that uh, they kind of stitch everything together. So when you write your application in Lua and then you hit build, what's actually happening on the backside is that application is being turned into uh, a native application, an Objective C or a Swift you know a Swift application. Uh, more, more, an Objective C application on the backside, or a Java application on the backside, and so you don't know how, need to know how to do that. That's where the engineering team at Corona Labs you know, takes that and does that for you. And the interesting thing is, is that um, you know, there's if you look at uh, the Apple side of things, iOS side of things, you know, there's a lot of continuity. There's a lot of things that are the same between Apple devices. But when you get on the Android side, there are a lot of things that are different between devices because uh, uh, Android is an open uh, source platform, and that means that uh, the uh, device manufacturers can take take uh, Android and they can create a device and they can put Android on it, and, and because of that, that means that devices are different between manufacturers. Some manufacturers will try to, to uh, manufacture a device uh, really cheaply. And they'll use the cheapest chips that they can get away with, uh, and that means that the device may run Android, but but there may it may be very very different than a device that comes from Google, who's using you know different different components and trying to make the best user experience possible. So, um, so one of the things that Corona does is it, it handles making sure that you as the developer don't have to worry about all those differences between all the different devices. It just handles that for you. There's even differences in devices between versions of software, uh, between versions of Android, and we we handle that all that for you, so you don't have to worry about it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anybody else? Questions? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, one one thing I want to want to say to you guys is that uh, whatever you're learning today, you know, learn what learn what uh, your professor is teaching you, right? Learn what they uh, they bring to the table, but also go beyond that, right? Look look for those things and try to figure out what what interests you and what how you can plug things together and how you can how you can do something that's not just part of of the classwork. Uh, you know, when when I was going through school, when I was going through university, we were learning technology that was already 20, 30 years old. And the internet was really just beginning to be a big a hot thing. And I was teaching myself technologies that nobody was teaching in classes. You know, I would do my schoolwork and I would, I, I would, I would actually do that as quickly as I could, you know, to do it, do it right, but do it as quickly as I could because there were other things that I wanted to do and spend my time on. And, uh, and that, that sort of, uh, so, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen the Steve Jobs, um, uh, uh, speech, you know, where he says, stay hungry, that kind of hunger being, thir you know, being thirsty for, uh, things that are not, people aren't, you know, aren't asking you to do helps you down the road because at some point you, 
you know how to do something that somebody else doesn't do know how to do because you've already put the time in uh, on, on learning how to do it yourself. So, so don't just do the work that's in front of you. Uh, you know, be curious and go out and, and, and figure out how to do other things on your own. That's good. That's true. Yeah. Have any other questions? Well, thank you so much, Charles, for joining us today. Really okay. appreciate your uh, participation in this class. Everybody has seen the Yes. Oh, we have a question. How old is Corona? corona how, old, how old is Corona? Corona Labs, yeah. Yeah, so Corona, corona was started uh, in 2009. Um, and there's, you know, there's some debate as to the, uh, the timing of things because things were started and then things, uh, things were formalized as an actual company later on. But, um, but it's, it's been around for a good long, se- you know, good seven years, which, you know, is in dog years is a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's Anska Mobile originally, right? It was Anska Mobile originally, yeah. So, so the backstory there is, you know, it was uh, it was basically two, like the, the kind of the, the startup story of two people and uh, you know working on it, um, and then they got a round of funding, uh, you know, a couple of million bucks to uh, to, to pursue the idea, um, and then it's just grown from there. So now we have uh, we have eleven engineers, uh, we have eight support people. Uh, Corona was recently acquired in December by Perk, which is an Austin-based company, and they have offices in Austin, Bangalore, Waterloo, Waterloo uh, Canada, and now um, now in in Palo Alto. So we, we've gone from being uh, about a you know ten fifteen person organization to being uh, about a hundred and fifty person organization. So so it's from Austin, right? Yeah. Are you in Austin now? Uh, we are. I'm. I'm in Austin. Uh, most of the like the, the marketing team, the the business development team, things like that are in Austin. But the the engineering team is in Palo Alto, uh, out in California. Um, but we have developers all over the the globe. I mean, we've got developers that are in New York and uh, out in California, and we've got developers that are in Korea, Ireland, and not not just you know, I mean, community developers, not not uh, Corona developers, but community developers are. Um, all over the place. Uh, we do have internally. We do have developers who are in uh, Germany, Ireland. Uh, we've got one that's in Korea. Uh, so I guess yeah. I guess as I was naming those off, I guess we, we have have them in both places, uh, both uh, internal developers and community developers. Sweet. Yeah. Well, we have to uh, get to lunch, but thanks so much again. Okay. Good luck on your apps and, and please send me links to, 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 uh, to everything when you guys are ready. I would love to promote those to the community. All right, we will do that. Thank you. All right. Take care. Have a great day. You too.